Green Bean Pie is the grand champion of all bean pies. The rich flavor and smooth texture takes this pie to a whole new level of delicious. One bite and you'll understand why people all over the country call daily to order Green Bean Pie. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie. This bean pie is delicious. Mohammed Speaks presents Messenger Elijah Muhammad's Teachings by Minister Khalil Shabazz every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. at Muhammad's Temple of Islam, 12609 East McNichols Road in Detroit. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful. So, Master's Day of Judgment in which we now live, the alone do we serve, the alone seek for thine help and aid. O Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray if they heard thy teachings. Say here lies one God, Lies he of whom nothing is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He beget us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is heard to be served, worshipped, praise besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor of Elijah Muhammad is our true servant and last apostle. I mean, we'd like to acknowledge the brothers and sisters that extended us the greetings of Assalamu alaikum. We have Brother Hanif from Hawaii. And we had the Rafiq family. And I like to say in the name of Allah who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, in the name of his last and greatest messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'd like to greet the brothers and sisters with the nation of Islam, greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. Today, we'd like to talk about the November 14, 1969 Muhammad speech, and it's called Fire Fed with Fuel. And we want to read the article that uh, is written by Brother Brad Braddy BX. And he's from the meat department at your supermarket. And the title of his article is called Muhammad Slaughter of the Fatted Calf. Now, the one thing about the messenger's teachings that's different from today is that they could take everything and relate it to some work. Like everything about what the messenger said, like in the teachings with uh, uh, the Bible and all that, they could relate it to some work. Because when they talk about the fatted calf, that comes from the prodigal son. But this brother can take the fatted calf and relate it to beef carving. Because everything that the messenger said was related to some work. Yeah. It wasn't like all this spiritual stuff. You know, we in this generation like the spiritual stuff. You know, we like to talk all the spiritual stuff. But when you look at the messenger, everybody who wrote their article could relate what they was doing to something in the teachings. Whether it was the Bible, Holy Quran, the lessons, it all translated into some type of work. So, the brother says as it was in the days of the return of the prodigal son the people were so happy upon his arrival that they slaughtered the fatted calf and he says no the bible states a fatted calf the fact is this his own people knew that he would return to them his own and that he must first be fed some work. Right. It ain't just talking about the prodigal son with the spiritual stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's right. talking about they first must be fed. Right. He the beef car. Right. You know what I'm saying? He ain't got nothing to do with the spiritual stuff. He right. talking about the beef car. Right. All praise due to Allah. Right. Right. So the messenger says, and this is on the prodigal son that's in uh, uh, the message to the black man. And it's on page 25 and 26. The messenger says the prodigal son being tempted by the loose life of strange women, drinking, gambling, and adultery, caused him to love the stranger's way of life 
so much so that it cost him all that he originally possessed, self-independence and divine guidance. His father, God in person, had to come and be his representative to again meet his brothers, families, and friends. Noting nothing fits the description of us better, the so-called Negroes, Asiatics. Many of us today are so lazy that we are willing to suffer anything rather than go for self. It is true that our God has come to set us in heaven, but not a heaven wherein we will not have to work. It's the message. Everything had to do with some work. Minister and captain and lieutenant mean work. That's right. That's right. Respect and protect the black woman mean work. That's right. Everything mean work. That's right. But in the new school thing, we just be with the spiritual stuff. So all we talk about is the spiritual stuff. We don't never relate the spiritual stuff to no work. It's always the spiritual. Cause I was on, cause I often go to read what Muslims' perspective is on stuff, you know, to come up with a subject. Sometimes you're thinking, like, well, I'm going to talk about something. So why I go read something that somebody's saying, I go, oh, we can talk about that. All praise to Allah. So the subject came up about how the messenger said we must control the black woman. That's what brother was talking about. Saying the messenger said we got to control the black woman. And their perspective ain't got to do nothing with no work. All it's talking about is this ego stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I tell you to go make me a sandwich, go make me a sandwich. Because <laughs> the messenger said, we got to control the black woman. <laughs> what he said. Or, if I tell you to go iron a shirt for me. Mm-hmm. The messenger said that we're supposed to control the black woman, so you're supposed to do what I'm telling you to do. Well, sister, you got a defense because the sisters really, when them brothers be saying that, the sisters don't really have nothing to say. Because a lot of times it's hard to find the stuff the brother's supposed to do. Because this ain't no one way thing That's right. with the message. That's right. Ain't no one way thing. He didn't teach the sisters or the brothers, ain't supposed to be teaching the sisters. Sisters got MGT class. That's right. All praise due to Allah. So the sisters supposed to learn their role in MGT class. That's right. Brothers ain't supposed to come into each MGT class for that purpose. Right. That's right. Because brothers going to take the message of teaching for the ego stuff. Uh-huh. And if brothers left alone to teach the sisters, they going to just teach them the ego stuff. Right. You know, you do what I tell you to do. Right. So the sisters got the MGT class. But whenever these brothers want to teach the sisters, Sisters got a defense. All you got to do is go on the Muhammad Speaks website. Go to the part where the messenger says, your role in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper program. Yes, sir. That's what you do. All oh, praise to Allah. Right. You got something to say? Right. Say, well, since you trying to help me, you know, <laughs> what the messenger said, let me help you, brother. Right. This is what the messenger said your role is. Right. In the Muhammad sense, we talking about what the messenger said. The messenger said in your role in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper program, he said, if you sincerely want to help our people in the struggle for freedom, justice, and equality, then right now as FOI, this is the best way. Mm-hmm. What the messenger said. Just like he told us we got to control the black woman. That's what he said. He also said that if you want to help in raising the the, the black man and woman, this is the best way. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Speaks newspaper. Then he even goes even further. It's another where he talks about the Muhammad Speaks newspaper, and it's called The Honorable Elijah Muhammad Speaks to the Fruit of Islam, April 23rd, 1962. It's the message. He says this paper has begun to help us give life to our people. It helps us financially and in every way with our mosques and with other programs that we have other than rent 
and purchasing of mosques. I think we should get behind this paper. It is helping the nation and it is helping and in helping the nation, you are helping yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because the, the paper serve two purposes. First, it help us get our people. Right. Yes, it help us do that. Yes, sir. Then it help us financially. That's right. All praise due to Allah. Because when the messenger taught us to control the black woman, he ain't just talking about your little personal pre pleasures. Right. Right. That ain't what it is. Because when the messenger was alive, it was a process to get married. Yes. Yes, sir. Brother couldn't just say, oh, I like this sister, let me, let me have her. No, you had to go through the captains. Mm -hmm. And then when you go through them, they checking on you. That's right. Because as a brother, you got a duty. That's right. All of us got a duty. And in FOR class, we learn our duty. Right. We have a duty as fathers. That's right. We have duty as husbands. Mm -hmm. And we got a duty to our nation. That's right. yes. That's right. Them the three duties that brothers learn when they come to FOI class. Mm -hmm. All praise due to Allah. Yeah. Sisters don't teach us that. Mm -hmm. We learn that from another brother. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because when you come to FOI class, ain't none of the spiritual stuff. No. Mm -hmm. We don't want to hear nothing about the black man is God when you come there for our class. Right. Ain't got nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. It's military training. That's right. FOI is the military training of the men that belong to Islam in North America. Right. You all uh, praise right. Allah. Right. You get the spiritual stuff on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's right. One hour on Sunday, you get the spiritual stuff. Right. You get all the black man is God stuff. Right. That's what you get on Sunday. But all the other time, you get military training. That's right. You ain't getting all that to blame. We don't want to hear nothing about that. How many papers you want, brother? That's right. What's your charity slip looking like, brother? That's right. What that attendance looking like? That's right. How many lost files? That's, that's the FOI work stuff. That's right. Yes, sir. Because Islam is the spiritual and it's the work. Yes, sir. It ain't just one side. Mm -hmm. Sisters learn their thing. Right. They learn how to take care of their husband. Yes, sir. But they don't just take care of their husband for his personal pleasure. They take care of their husbands to work. Yes. Uh -huh. That's what they take care of their husbands for. It ain't to be fanning you and putting grapes in your mouth. Right. That ain't what MGT is. That's right. That ain't what the messenger meant when he said control the black woman. Yes, sir. But we on this ego spiritual stuff. Mm -hmm. So all we know how to talk about is the spiritual ego stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what the black man is God mean. The black man is God when the messenger was around meant work. Yes, yes. All right. praise due to Allah. Right. That's what that meant. Because you also had an instruction to the laborers, given to the laborers by our Savior, W.D. Farah Muhammad. It says, note, here, lesson number one is said to be the student's assignment. First, lesson number one lays the base of our work today. Our work. Right. Everything got to do with some work. Everything got to do with some work. Ain't nothing the messenger taught on some ego stuff. Mm -mm. So, when you was a Muslim during the time of the message, you wanted to marry a sister. They about to check out that work. Right. That's right. Ain't all that black man is God stuff. That don't apply. That only apply on Sunday during the, the meeting. Right. But other time, everything else mean work. Yes, sir. So, you want to marry this sister, we about to check your work. Because mm -hmm. maybe you ain't ready to get married to this sister now. Because it take work to be married. It ain't just a Dropping the grapes in your mouth stuff. Right. It take work. Right. And maybe you ain't ready to be married yet because your charity slip, them papers, right. them lost funds you supposed to be getting. Mm -hmm. Maybe you slacking on that. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need to tell this sister, maybe you need to hold off on marrying this brother. Right. He ain't ready. That's right. That's Islam. Mm -hmm. praise oh, praise God. God. It ain't all this ego stuff. Mm -hmm. Islam means work. And that's how the messenger taught us. Islam means work. That's right. So the messenger went even further. And this is what these new school brothers really ain't going to like about the Muhammad speaks. The messenger says, I think we can sell 100,000 copies in Chicago alone. He says, get out and prove to Allah that we are ministers of his word. Ring the bell and say good morning or good evening. Then say Muhammad speaks. This is sufficient. Muhammad speaks. That is all you got to say. That's right. That's all you got to say, right. brother. That's 
Right. All that black man's God stuff is for the temple, for the hour. Right. Right. So all that's for spiritual stuff. Then he go on to say, don't preach a sermon. Don't read a page. Don't say anything but Muhammad speaks. Mm -hmm. Sister, you got out when you're dealing with these new school brothers. That's right. I asked him, well, brother, how many hours a day do you spend getting the dead? Right. How many hours a day? A day. Right. Because the messenger said, we well, want to tell the sister what the messenger said. The messenger said the brother should spend at least two hours. That's right. At least. That's right. That's what he said. That's right. We got our sister dealing with these new school brothers because that's going to shut them up. Right. It's going to shut them up. The truth is a two edged sword. That's right. It cut brothers and sisters. That's right. That's what it is. The truth hurts. Because I'm telling you. It's a bitter pill when you read that Muhammad speaks and you a brother. I ain't going to lie to you. It's a bitter pill. Because the most bitter pill is this from now on. You can't talk about what you did yesterday, what you did last week. Right. That don't count for the day. Right. Today a whole new day. That's right. And I'm telling you, you could be fired up today. Mm -hmm. Fired up. But then tomorrow. <laughs> right. Then next week. Right. Then it's getting cold. Right. And it's raining. That's right. You ain't got no money. You ain't got no time. It's real life. Yes, sir. But it's from now on. Right. It's just what it is. You got to get the dead. That's yes. right. You're responsible for the dead yes, and his work. Yes. Islam is work. Because yes, I know when you first get to work as an FOI, you be having high hopes. I'm going out today. And I'm going today. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing stopping me today. Mm -hmm. Then by lunchtime. Man, look like I might have to work a little overtime today. Yeah. Can't leave like I thought. But I still got to go out. That's right. Still got to go out. Yes, sir. Then, it look like it's raining. It look like it might rain. Look like it might rain. Because the tighter you get, the more you be looking in the sky for the <laughs> rain cloud. Like, maybe it might rain. Right. Maybe it might rain. Right. Then when you see that one drop hit the windshield, it's like, oh, it's about to rain. Right. It's about to rain. Then it don't rain, and you looking like I gotta go out. All praise to Allah. Tell me, it's real. That's right. Work is real, and it's from now on. That's right. From now on, this is our job as Muslims. Yes, sir. It's to go out and get the dead. That's right. It's our job. That's what the messenger taught us to do. Yes, Show our responsibility to our children, to our wives, and to our nation. Yes, sir. That's right. That's what we supposed to do. All this spiritual stuff. No, brother. We get the wrong understanding. Right. We get a lost found the wrong understanding. Right. When we talk this kind of talk, this spiritual stuff, we're supposed to be talking about getting the dead. That's right. We're supposed to be talking about how we're going to attract people to come to the temple. That's right. We're supposed to be talking that kind of talk because the message said the only thing you need to say is Muhammad speaks. Yes, sir. That's right. That's he ain't right. saying nothing about teaching them, reading the page, and coming up with this wise guy stuff. He said the best thing you can say, Muhammad speaks. That's, That's right. it. That's right. That's all you got to say. That's right. So he said... Muhammad speaks. That is all you have to say. Don't preach a sermon. Don't read a page. Don't say anything but Muhammad speaks. That's the same with the sisters too. If a brother really want a sister to know what the messenger told her to do, tell her to go join the temple. Yes. Yes. Invite her to come out. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So she can go to MGT class and learn what the messenger told her. That's I'll right. praise you to Allah. That's your job to be trying to teach no sister what she's supposed to do. That's right. That's right. your job. Because you're going to keep the ego stuff. Mm -hmm. You need to just tell her what she needs to know to get her to come to the temple. That's right. And messenger set up everything else from there. Mm -hmm. He set up the MGT class. Right. So let's talk about what did the messenger mean when he said that we must control the black woman. Let's talk about the work part. We got, this was from Atlanta Black Star. And it says, white man get slapped for calling black female employee the N-word. Now this sister was working at, she was working at Taco Bell. So this devil come in there, and this is a part of controlling the black woman. Because our women ain't supposed to be working out here for the devil like this. But when we talk all this control of the black woman stuff, we don't never talk about that. This devil done just shot up this Walmart with an AK-47. Yes, sir. The messenger said we must control the black woman, right? Right. 
Shouldn't nobody have to go, no, no sister. Gotta go to no Walmart. We, the black man, controlling our black woman. We supposed to say, well, since you know, they done shot up this Walmart, you go to your supermarket then the shop. You ain't gotta go to no Walmart. Go to Salon. Go to the Shabazz. Right. That's controlling the black woman. Yeah. Controlling the environment. All oh, praise to Allah. Right. It ain't talking about just you getting grapes dropped in your mouth. Right. Talking about controlling the environment for the black woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, so right. she can have somewhere to feel safe when she go shop. That's, right. That's, That's right. controlling the black woman. Right. It ain't got nothing to do with the fan and stuff. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with ironing your shirt. It ain't got nothing to do with the grapes. Right. And that's what you learn in MCT class. I mean in FOI class. Mm -hmm. Because you got a duty to your children, to your wife, and to your nation. Yes. That's right. And when the messenger set up the Muhammad Speaks newspaper, he said it helps us financially. That's right. So that's the right. way they was able to cash out on all these business to control the black woman mm -hmm. through the Muhammad Speaks newspaper. Right. It's all designed in the program. Right. Yes, Everything is designed in the program for the work yes, to help the believers. Yes. That's why it's about some work. That's right. It ain't about a lot of talking mm -hmm. and science. Right. See, these brothers love that science. Mm -hmm. That's how they do with this science stuff. First, they science. Then after that science get old, they add science on top of the science. <laughs> First, they'll say, the messenger God. And that started getting old. Because after a while, the science get old, you know, when all you doing is sciencing all the time. You got to come up with some new science. Uh -huh. So now these brothers talking about the messenger is our lying person. Mm. That's what they saying. Because you done just, the, the God stuff got old, so now he a lying person. He, he fits that now, you know. Like, where you get that from? Mm -hmm. Brothers got too much time on their hands. <laughs> right. Be sitting up there sciencing and sciencing the science. Uh -huh. Just coming up with more stuff. Uh -huh. Because when all you got to do is science, you can think you you on the level with Master Farah Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. When you yeah. ain't doing no work. <laughs> right. All you doing is sitting at home reading and science, and you, you can start be like, well, I think I'm on the level. But go out and sell you some papers. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Them papers will keep your feet on the ground. That's right. I'm That's trying to right. tell you. Because right. when I get out there and I think about the message yes, sir. every time, like this job too big for this one man show stuff. Right. I ain't got what it takes to be this one man show. Right. I need a lot. That's right. All praise to a lot. I need a lot. That's right. Tell him. That's but if right. you at home sciencing, you ain't gonna come up with that. That's but right. you, your mind can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Your mind in the clouds. But when you gotta work, you got a wife, mm -hmm. you got bills, mm -hmm. you got a duty to your nation. That's right. You know you need a lot. That's right. That's right. Tell him. Because right. when the messengers say shoulder mm -hmm. your responsibility, when you put something on your shoulder, that's some heavy weight. Yes, sir. That's right. Shouldering something. Yeah. Shouldering, you don't shoulder nothing light. You can carry something light. Right. He says shoulder your responsibility. That's right. That's right. So when you carry something on your shoulder, it's heavy. That's right. And if you're not shouldering your responsibility to that's Muhammad Speaks newspaper program, you, you, you come up with all this science. Mm -hmm. Because it's more than the science. That's it's right. the work. Right. And the work will keep your feet on the ground. That's right. Tell him. That's right. Trying to get lost found. Mm -hmm. That'll keep your feet on the ground, brother. That's right. Looking at the condition of the people. Yes, sir. Because yes. our little spot, we like to go to by a liquor store. It's a soul food spot and gas station. So we see all walks of life. Right. Yes, sir. You need a lot, brother. That's right. That's all I'm going to tell you. That's right. Sometimes it's good days. That's right. Customers be good. Yes, sir. Sometimes them brothers be savage, brother. Right. Right. Coming in that liquor store. Right. Sometimes they be saw me. One time I'm standing in front of the liquor store. Now this brother, I see him all the time. He know what I do. I done talk to him and everything. So there's one particular time he see me standing there. So he playing the loud music. Say, okay, he only gonna be here for a minute running the store, come out. Then he start playing the most savage music I think he can find. Because I think he was trying to trying to bother. Because he didn't like one time, I wouldn't give him the paper. Because he was already telling me about how he was getting them from Farrakhan. And they get me. Like, well, brother, we donations for this. Right. Now, if you really want the paper and you trying to donate but you ain't got it, I'll give it to anybody. Right. But you ain't about to think 
that this is my job to give it to you. I ain't giving you nothing. Right, right. I want you to know that. they That's good for them to give it to you. I ain't giving it to you, brother. Right. You don't come up to me expecting me to give you nothing. Right. Giving you nothing. Right. So the brother got like a bad taste in his mouth. Right. So he come with the loud music. Then he get out and start acting like he's selling weed to people. Now I got to try to find me somewhere else, go further down the corner because of this brother. Right. All kind of stuff you dealing with with that's these right. brothers, man. That's right. That's Sisters right. too. That's right. Sisters coming in there half naked. Mm -hmm. You, Muhammad speaks sister that. No, you know. <laughs> All kind of stuff. That's right. All kind of stuff. Come out the snow smiling. All kind of stuff. I'm telling That's you, right. we need a lot. That's right. This thing ain't no spiritual stuff. This real. That's it's right. work. That's right. You got to understand the spiritual to understand the work. It all goes hand in hand. It ain't right. one outweighing up. Right. You need some spiritual. Right. But too much spiritual make brothers weak. That's right. I'm gonna just tell you. Right. Too much spiritual stuff make brothers weak. That's right. Too much of this weird friends and influence people stuff make brothers weak. Mm -hmm. Tell you. Brothers need some of that hardcore military stuff. That's right. That's what brothers need. All of this win, friends, and influence people stuff, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you're supposed to disrespect no brother. Right. I'm not saying you're supposed to misuse no brother. But in the Nation of Islam with the FOI, you got to learn how to push brothers to the limit. Mm -hmm. All this win, friends, and influence people stuff, no, that ain't going to cut the cheese, brother. <laughs> Tell him, you need some hardcore military stuff. You need the brothers that's dealing with the FOI to be military to the bone. Mm -hmm. To the bone, brother. I don't want to hear none of that. Right. None of that. How many papers you get? How many loss files you get? What you doing? Mm -hmm. What you doing? Don't come in here telling me nothing about how the black man is God. I get the spiritual stuff just like you. Mm -hmm. Get to work. Right. All oh, oh, praise due to Allah. Right. And I know the one thing about the military that I learned. Sometimes we would have the hardcore search. Sometimes you will have the win friends and influence people. Now, when you got the hardcore one, you hate him. Keep it real. You hate him. Because he always on your case. Right. Mm -hmm. Always on your case. He ain't hearing no excuses. He don't want to hear nothing. It's military, military, military. All the time. You hate him. But they say you don't realize what you got till it's gone. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. When he leaves. You start seeing your unit get weak when you got this win friends and influence people, Sergeant. I'm telling you, they get weak. You see brothers who used to be on time all the time. Stop coming on time. Because now you got an excuse. He ain't going to do nothing to you. He going to be weak. So why, why I got to come? He going to be weak. So then you start getting lazy. The stuff you used to do with the hardcore one, you don't want to do it no more. Because you got the win, friends, and influence people one. He not really pushing you to do what you can do. You got to push him to the limit. That's right. You got to push him to the limit. That's right. You can't be feeling sorry for him. You can't be because you ain't going to get the best out of brother. Yeah. Just because a brother lazy don't mean he a bad brother. That's right. That's right. Just because he rebellious don't mean he Because you, you get rebellious because after the laziness, then the rebellious stuff come. Because right. the... Uh, win friends and influence people one, he still got to try to get you to do what the hardcore one was making you do. He can't do it. Because not only do laziness produce rebelliousness, now we don't want to do it. We don't want to do that. So now the win friends and influence people one having a problem with us. So we rebellious. But then, that win friends and influence people one leave. Then here come another hardcore. Our co brother don't care nothing about all that. Them sergeants used to say, when they used to see them rebellious brothers, they used to say, he don't need nothing but some motivation. That's all he need. <laughs> nothing but some motivation. I used to love to see them street brothers come in the military, because you know they think they hard. Yeah. Think you tough. I was in the street. Right. The street and the military are two different things. Now, you may be Nino Brown on the street, yeah. and we respect you as Nino Brown on your street <laughs> thing. But the military a different world, brother. That's right. They don't know that the sergeant with the platoon or the, or the unit get up in the morning before they go to work and run about five, six miles. Uh -huh. See, that street stuff, you ain't doing that on the street. Right. 
Not only do they run five or six miles, sometimes they have their boots, their backpack, and their weapon with them. Running. Not just running, running the steps, singing capers. Running six miles. And the drill sergeant be so bad, he'll be in the front leading it. Then he'll turn around and start backpedaling. And he'll see that one back there lagging behind. He'll go all the way back there and be young, like, you know, you need to get it together. Come on, let's go. Then he'll turn around, run right back to the front and keep on marching. That's the sergeant. You don't do that on the street. That's right. So when them sergeants see them street brothers, say he don't need nothing but some motivation. That's all he need. Because you're going to break before the sergeant break. Mm -hmm. That's military. Mm -hmm. And them sergeants don't play no games. Mm -hmm. When they say a thing, that's what they mean. Mm -hmm. But they're an example. Okay. That's the one thing about the sergeant. Mm -hmm. I remember we used to have early morning drills, like surprise drills. I used to, we always used to try to catch the sergeant slipping. We want to see if his t-shirt dirty. You know, we just got to hop up and put our clothes on and leave. We want to see is his t-shirt dirty. We want to see is his, is his shoes ain't shine. Is, he, is, is his shirt out of his pants. But every time you saw the sergeant, he ain't had no sleep in his eye, none of that. He was always on point. Mm -hmm. Always on point. And that made us respect him. Yes, sir. All praise to so love. When you see the sergeant working, when you see him doing what you're doing and he ain't complaining and he on it, that make you respect him. So when he leave, and you get this old wind, friends, and influence, you don't nobody respect him. You think you like him at first, because now the gunny gone, we, we can chill now. Uh, right. But after you start seeing your unit get weak, after you start seeing this brother who was rebellious, but he was hard working with the hard, with the hard Cohen, then you see him get back rebellious and weak again. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you miss old gun. Right. You be wondering what he doing. Like, I wonder what he doing right now. You miss him. It's the same thing with the nation of Islam, yeah, brother. Right. Yeah. It's a military. You don't need all of the wind friend stuff. You need the military. These brothers got too much time on their hands yeah. with the spiritual stuff. They got this brother in Chicago. He had, for their little savior's day, he had some plaque that he was showing the people that this Jewish person gave him this plaque talking about he the Messiah. Nah, that's, that's too much spiritual stuff. Yeah. When you start talking all that. Brothers, it's too spiritual when you go for that. Right. What you mean, you... you the, this a military, brother. <laughs> all you need to be is the minister. Yeah. Really. That's all. All praise you to Allah. That's all you really need to be. Right. Why we need you to be the Messiah? <laughs> right. Why we need you to be the messenger and the apostle when it's a military, brother? Right. We right. don't need you to be no apostle. Right. We don't need you to be the Messiah. Right. We here doing the work. That's right. Well, we here to care. That's what you learn in that FOI clip. But when it's spiritual, brothers ain't doing no work. That's right. When all these hypocrites get up in front of you and try to take the place of the messenger, ain't doing no work. That's right. They gotta keep it spiritual. Uh -huh. They gotta talk all this excessive spiritual stuff. And they only have military enough to showboat. Yeah. Yeah. Military yeah. enough to show. I can take over this big venue so we can do this, this, and this, and that. Yeah. Uh -huh. But just recently, you had this just an attack for some minor fender bender. Mind the fender bender. See, that, don't, that ain't the showboating stuff right there. We ain't heard nothing else from that. Uh -uh. That kind of stuff ain't supposed to happen. That's right. No FOI. That ain't supposed to happen. You supposed to hear somebody that slipped on a banana peel somewhere. <laughs> what we supposed to hear? You ain't supposed to attack. Even though in they camp, they don't well out. The sisters don't have to wear headpieces. They let them sisters do what they want to do. But the fact is, y'all letting them do that. Mm -hmm. That's, that's y'all rules. So if this sister attack, she ain't supposed to get attacked if she in your camp. Mm -hmm. She in good standing. Mm -hmm. Why she getting attacked? Because we too spiritual. Mm -hmm. Ain't no military. We got enough military for the showboat and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the messenger wasn't like that. So you got this sister who this devil come in there and call her, as they say. Mm -hmm. So this sister, I was proud to see, she defended herself. This sister came from behind the counter on this devil. He knew he had the wrong one. Because this sister came from behind the counter on him as he was walking out. And she slapped him in the back of the head when he was walking out. So he turned around and tried to kick her. And she like sidestepped him and slapped him again like, come on. Tell him. I was like, wow. She 
people ain't playing no games. Sometimes you can push people too far. Sometimes you can let the N-word slide. Me here, though. Sometimes, like, I ain't letting this one slide. I done been called the N-word too much. I'm like, he about to pay for that. So this sister defended herself, but she shouldn't have to go through that. All right, that's right. Because the black man, the messenger said, supposed to control the black woman, right? Yeah, yeah. Then we got another. This sister, it's on CNN. It say, man attacks McDonald's employee over a straw. Wow. Now, they say that it was McDonald's policy to not to keep the straws behind the counter no more. They supposed to keep them out somewhere. So the sister was in the right. But the devil seeing the nigga, hey, where my straw? Mm -hmm. This is what sisters got to deal with out here in the world. Mm -hmm. You working, you doing your job, because the, the devil took the straws. It ain't got nothing to do with the straws. But this devil see a nigga. He don't care nothing about all that. Mm -hmm. Where my straw? Mm -hmm. So this devil reached and grabbed his sister and like pulled her towards the counter. So, of course, the sister wasn't ready for that, so she went back to the counter. And when she realized what was going on, she leaned back and started jabbing this devil. Uh -huh. he, wasn't, he wasn't expecting it either. Right. The sister, sometimes, they, they defend themselves. Right. All right. praise due to Allah. Right. They defend themselves. So, when the messenger talking about we supposed to control the black woman, let's see what he was talking about. Because the messenger did, in fact, say, that the black man must control the black woman. But what was he talking about different than what we talking about? We can always go to the progress section. Now this is a progress section that we saw before, but it has temple number 12. You see his sisters working for temple number 12, the University of Islam. You got sisters working that. They ain't got to worry about no devils coming in there punching them and hitting them and calling them the N-word. Because mm -hmm. the messenger controlling the black woman. Right. He controlling where they go. Right. Controlling where they work. Yes. Controlling how they think. Mm -hmm. Controlling how they dress. Yes. That's controlling the black woman. All right. oh, praise you to Allah. Then we see another. It says, Temple number 12 on TV. You got another sister. Working with the TV brothers. Mm -hmm. Whatever they do for the TV, she doing that. Then we have, and this one was the most impressive. You had the sisters with the temple number 12 clothing factor. Mm -hmm. Making the fact. Yes. Because not only did they have the temple number 12 clothing factories all throughout with other temples, they had the National Clothing Factory in Chicago. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got sisters in Philly doing it. And they got right here, even got the sisters' names. From here, here, and here. This sister's making the emblems on the fast. Okay. Yes, sir. They making everything. Yes, sir. Controlling the black woman. Mm -hmm. All praise to the Lord. They got to do with the work. Yes. Right. It ain't got nothing to do. We ain't seen no sister dropping no grapes in no brother's mouth. Right. We ain't seen none of that. We seen sisters working. Mm -hmm. It's like the brothers working because Islam is a working religion for everybody. That's it ain't right. just for the brothers. It's working religion for the sisters too. Right. So we got this sister, the top sister's name is Sister Pearl, manager of Temple Number 12 Clothing Factory, performs cutting operation. So a sister, the manager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now see, with the black man as God, brothers, they say the sisters ain't God. It's just the brothers. But when you see how the messenger put everybody to work and how everybody worked together, right. I don't go for this stuff they be trying to say about the sisters. Right. We the same. Mm -hmm. We just a degree above. Right. Yes, sir. And when you look at the work, you can tell. Sisters work too. That's right. Sisters work hard. That's it right. ain't just the brothers. Right. You got the sister who the manager of the clothing factory. Then you got sister Lucy 2X of Temple Number no. 2 Clothing Factory Views Accounts. Sister reviewing the accounts with the money stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you got Sister Dolores 17X, Machine, Mograms, Distinctive Star, and MTT letters on the feds. Mm -hmm. So you got this sister making the designs on the feds. Sisters. Yeah. Controlling the black woman. So then we have the National Clothing Factory that was in Chicago. 
And this says, and this is from, oh, wrong one. This one is written by uh, Doreen Tuex, and she's the Muhammad Speak staff writer. Sisters everywhere working. Right. Helping out. Right. The messenger ain't had to belittle the sisters. No, you get no. them to work. Right. Tell them you ain't God and all that nonsense we do. Tell them how the messenger said we got to, none of that. Teach the sisters what they need to know in MGT. Teach the brothers. And y'all get to work. Right. Right. Everybody will fall in yeah. when you get in the proper training. That's brothers right. know what they supposed to do. Sisters know what they supposed to do. Right. That's why you need a temple. That's right. Everybody need to learn their role. Right. Brothers right. need to all praise with the love. Right. They need to learn it from the temple. Right. They don't need to learn it on the internet or listen to the brothers try to teach right. each other what, right. what the messenger That's said. Right. The messenger said when you had that Muhammad speech, the best thing to say. Yeah. Muhammad speech. Yes, it's the best thing to say now. But when you're talking to people, you don't say Muhammad speak. You say the messenger said. The messenger said this. And then the me message to the black man and all that kind of stuff. It ain't all this science. Mm -hmm. Well, you telling people what you think and what you think he said. Mm -hmm. So it says, we hope to be able to clothe the entire nation of Islam in North America and those temples outside of America. We hope to be able to dress our sisters so that when we meet them, we'll all look the same says Sister Elizabeth 5F Streamstress, Seamstress at the National Clothing Factory. In its new location in Cottage Grove, the National Clothing Factory has emerged from a small establishment on 79th Street housing approximately 15 machines to the bustling enterprise with 37 sewing machines in operation and more than 60 employees. Sister Elizabeth, a registered follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad since 1950, recalls early origins of the factory in the sewing room at the old temple on Greenwood Street. She says, first we were, we were on a small scale producing 75 to 100 garments a week. Now for, for a month, we run roughly 1,000 1, garments or more, says Sister Elizabeth. From there, we extended with Sister Ethel Sharif as manager to, small, to a small place on 71st and South Parkway. So when you read what's going on, the sisters right there with the brothers when they growing, when they doing all of this stuff. The sisters wasn't somewhere at home just, the sisters was involved in it too. That's right, that's right. They was involved in it too. It wasn't no belittling stuff. And we get that kind of perspective when we ain't doing no work. Because if we doing work and we got a temple, we need help. This brother, uh, brother Troy, he was talking about the fight they had in Louisiana in the temple. He on YouTube talking about. He said not only was the brothers fighting, the sisters were fighting too. He said and the children. And he said it was a hard fight. He didn't say like we were just throwing a couple bowls. He said we was fighting. Hard fight. Sisters fighting too. Yes, sir. It ain't no belittling stuff. Right. We all work together. That's the right. nation of Islam. It's work. Yes. It's work for everybody. That's right. So it says, she says, I just love our new location because we have all kind of space here and we're using every bit so that proves we were busting out of the sides of our old location, Sister Helen said. Presently, the sewing factory produces women's wear, school uniforms, paternity dresses, fezzes, boy suits, and girl uniforms. Sister Betty Adex, seamstress at the factory since 1969, commented on the significance of the production of the girls' uniform. She says, one of the biggest accomplishments of the National Clothing Factory is that now our little girls can wear the national garments and come look like their mothers. All oh, praise to Allah. So everybody involved. You got the junior FOI selling papers too. Mm -hmm. They got junior FOI class. You got the little sisters wearing garments like their mothers. Mm -hmm. Everybody is involved when you're doing work. That's right. But when you science, you want to be, you know, black man is God and ain't nobody else nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's when you know brothers ain't doing no work. Right. When they head in the clouds, right. uh -huh. you know they ain't doing no work. Then when you look at the Muhammad Speaks newspaper, and look at the sisters who was writing for the Muhammad Speaks newspaper. In the same Muhammad Speaks newspaper we read, you got three articles. You got one on education in Islam. 
and is by sister Beverly 6X, National Director of Education for the University of Islam. A sister. Yes, sir. National. Mm -hmm. That don't mean the one in Chicago. That mean all of them. Right. The National Director of Education. Mm -hmm. Because the one thing about the University of Islam, they had their own curriculum. Yes. The messenger had his own everything. Yes. Right. That's right. His own. So I can teach these children what we want to teach. Them. That's right. We ain't got to teach them the same curriculum that the devil teach. Right. We got our own curriculum. Right. And you had a sister who was the national director of education. Then you had, it says, on life in the Sudan. And this was written by Baina Sharif, another sister. Yeah. Going overseas to study in college in the Sudan. Mm -hmm. A sister. Mm -hmm. Then you could go and listen to her on YouTube talk about the messenger training her to teach women. Mm -hmm. This is how sisters supposed to learn they wrote. That's right. right. From sisters who trained by the messenger to teach sisters. Yes. There ain't no brothers telling the sisters what you're supposed to do for you. Because the sister got a duty too. That's right. Duty to her husband, duty to her children, and she got a duty to her nation too. That's right. Everybody. Right. It's the same. Right. So just like the brothers got the captains and the lieutenants and all that, sisters got the same thing. That's right. That's, right. That's, That's right. what it is. Mm -hmm. So when you listen to her talk, she taught real educators. And the thing I love about the messages followers, when they educate, they don't sound white. Mm -hmm. They still sound black, but they sound intelligent, I should say. Right. Because right. yes, whenever you hear a minister for the message, he might be ghetto. Because some of them brothers were still ghetto too. Right. But they sound intelligent. Right. They use a little slang, but they use it intelligent. Mm -hmm. They ain't sound like a fool. Right. Same with the sisters. Sister sounded intelligent when you listen to her. She even breaking down mathematics and everything. Mm -hmm. Sound intelligent. Sister. Then you have another article. It's called Women in Islam. Yeah. Written by Marjorie Hassan. Yeah. Because most of the time when we talk about the, the heavyweight brothers in the nation, we talking about Captain Joseph. Mm -hmm. You know, Ali Rashid now. Yeah. Malcolm. Mm -hmm. We don't never talk about the sisters. But when you read the Muhammad Speaks newspaper, it was some hardcore sisters too. That's right. That's just gotta right. keep it real. It was hardcore sisters too, working hard just like the brothers. That's right. But the sisters wasn't out front. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. Mm -hmm. Sisters had a role. Mm -hmm. They wasn't out front. Right. But they did their job just as good, just as hard. They were just as dedicated to the message as the brothers. That's right. It's just what it is. That's right. And that's what you see when you work. Uh -huh. That's what you see when you relay everything of the teachers to some work. Yeah. So everybody can fit in. Then we got the beef car talking about some work. Right. He can relate the prodigal son to the beef car. Right. <laughs> now, since we running out of time, I want to read about how this brother talked about how the messenger interviewed him. This was something to me. Now, this is the beef car. Mm -hmm. And that's what separates the messenger from these hypocrites, too. Mm -hmm. Because when you have people praising these hypocrites, you only really had them praising them for some spiritual teaching. Mm -hmm. That's it. People talk about how well you can teach and how you know the Holy Quran and all that. But the messenger had people from all walks of life right. praising his wisdom. Mm -hmm. All walks of life. So we had his brother. He says, we should never underestimate Muhammad's wisdom. I would like to pass for, pause for a few seconds to tell you how I became a laborer in the meat department. I wrote the Honorable Elijah Muhammad giving him my qualifications in meat cutting and handling and handling. And he answered giving me a date to come to Chicago, Illinois to speak with him. That's the message. Because mm -hmm. when we read that article that's called What Manner of Man, she talked about all the stuff the messenger was doing. Right. Holding interviews, mm -hmm. signing letters, right. but he still said his prayer. So this brother is one of the brothers who he wrote his letter back and told him from out of town, come to Chicago. That's how the messenger was rolling. Right. He got brothers who need jobs who in another city. Come to Chicago so I can interview. Right. So it says, uh, he says, I expected him, upon arrival, I expected him to give me a physical meat cutting test after we finished eating dinner. While dining, I remember him asking me about different parts of the cattle, such as how would I cut 
a seven bone beef rib or a beef cut and a hind quarter of beef and of course I answered him shortly afterward we were dismissed and this is the message he ain't talking no spiritual stuff right. he got the beef car right. it's the message right. I'm telling you, when you read these articles, you will be surprised. Like, how could the messenger's brain hold all of that? And he always right. Right, right. So he asking this brother about how to cut beef. I was like, wow. So he thinking, you know, it's going to be somebody else going to give me this, you know, this, this interview on the beef stuff. But the messenger, while he eating, giving him the interview. So he says... Brother Supreme Captain Sharif accompanied me outside and I asked him why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had not given me the meat cutting test. He replied that he had given me the test at the dinner table. He also added that the messenger was the nation's first butcher. <laughs> Praise due to Allah. I ain't know the messenger was no butcher. It's the messenger, man. You learn so much stuff about the messenger reading these articles. I didn't know the messenger was no butcher. He ain't just no spiritual teacher. Right. He done done everything. Right. You got the beef car. Because I wasn't going to even read this article. I'm going to just keep it real. I wasn't going to read this because I'm like, slaughter of the fatty, what that's about to be about. And then it was talking about the brother from your supermarket. So I'm like, I don't want to read this now. I might read it later. But I just started reading like, dang, the messenger was a butcher. Right. The stuff he was asking this brother about carving cattle. Right. Then in the article, the brother talking about the best cuts of meat that they had at the at the at the uh, farm, with the cattle and the, and the poultry and all of that. This brother really gets into the the, the cattle and the beef stuff. Yeah. Talking about the guidance of the messenger with the beef car. Yeah. I'm just just blown away because I already we was talking about the Muhammad's imports and all that went into that. I didn't listen to Brother Cornelius talk about the farm stuff and how he used to have to call the messenger. Right. Then we read what manner of man, and you see all this stuff. Then you start the beef carve. I thought that was it. Right. Now you find out about the beef carve. That's why can't nobody tell us that the messenger wasn't the messenger. That's right. All praise you to Allah. Right. And that's why I say that you can't take the place of a messenger. That's right. These hypocrites ain't sitting down with no beef carver having a beef carver tell everybody like, man, this brother, he's some happy. So not only do we have the beef cough, you also had white people praising the messenger. And it was different from this new school stuff. Because when these hypocrites had a white man praise them, they praise them about this spiritual spook stuff. Because they only praising them because they taking us away from the message. That's right. They taking us away from the white man's devil. That's right. They taking us away from the messenger being the message. That's right. They leading us into I'm the Messiah and all this garbage. Right. But you had white people who used to uh, uh, compliment the messenger on in their line of work. Because the messenger said you got friendships in all walks of life. That's right. So people ain't even had to like the religion of Islam. And still, in my line of work, what I do, I respect this man. Right. Because what he's doing in the nation of Islam still dealing with what they doing. Mm -hmm. We ran with Malcolm with the uh, Harlem Hospital. Mm -hmm. Doctors looking at the message. Mm -hmm. Beef carvers looking at the message. The dope head looking at the message. The banker looking at the message. Everybody looking at the messenger and they walk alike. Mm -hmm. They had to change nothing to respect the message. Mm -hmm. Why the dope man a dope man? He like, look, wow, look at the message. The doctor, wow, I ain't even never been to the temple, but he looking at the messenger from seeing his followers. Mm -hmm. So we got, this is the April 1st, 1975, Akron Beacon Journal. And the title of the article says, Whites Praise Muslims at Fundraise. It says, we do, we do business with the black Muslims because they are reliable, responsible customers who pay their bills. I believe that the black Muslims record should make all banks and financial institutions want to do business with them. This is a devil. This is the devil. It says, speaking was Robert A. Wallace the white vice chairman of the board of Ex of the board of exchange national bank of chicago so this is a big time death right. that's been doing business with the muslims because the messenger know how to make the teachings apply to everybody mm -hmm. so if you're a black man and you like business the messenger can make the teachings apply to you too mm -hmm. 
So you got white people who done done business with Muslims and respect the fact that they pay their bills. Uh -huh. So they recommending them saying, look, everybody, all you other devils right. that got banks right. should do business with them because they pay their bills. Mm -hmm. He ain't say nothing about no spiritual stuff. No. He ain't say nothing about the black man's God. He probably don't believe that. Right. But when, in his walk of life, right. the messenger touching them too. Mm -hmm. All praise to Allah. Right. The messenger right. said, in all walks of life, right. Islam can touch all walks of life. Yes, That's why we ain't got to change it to touch nobody in their walk of life. That's right. You ain't got to stop uh, teaching that the white man's a devil for to have white people to respect you. Right. It's something in the teachings that they going to see and respect about Muslims. Right. Care what it is. They might not like the white man's a devil part. They might not like the black man as God, but they might like the fact you pay your bills. Right. That's, right. That's all we need. You need some white operators a lot. What else you need a devil for? You need him to respect you in the bill paying thing so we can buy some land. Right. You operate to a lot. You ain't trying to be his friend. Right. So you ain't got to change the white man's a devil for no devil to respect you. That's right. All you got to do is whatever his uh, way of life is, he'll find something in Islam the way he respects you. Yes, sir. Well, brothers and sisters, we don't want to prolong the time. So I leave you as I came in the nation of Islam's greedy words of peace of Asalaam Alaik. Brothers and sisters, prayer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful. So, Master's Day of Judgment in which we now live, the alone do we serve, the alone seek for thine help and aid. O oh Allah, please guide us on the right path. Path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray if they heard thy teachings. Say here lies one God, lies he of whom nothing is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He beget us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is to be served, worship, or praise besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor of Elijah Muhammad is our true servant and last apostle. I mean, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us not to do anything to anyone who wouldn't have done it to ourselves and treat everybody right, even the devil. Assalamu alaikum.